Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to Skyblock 116. Wait, Skyblock? No, Skyblock 116. There we go. Yes, I got the intro card wrong on the last episode. Sorry, <laughs> it's just been a bit of a hectic end to the year and start of the new one. But welcome back, as I said, to Skyblock 116. I hope you guys are having a great day. In today's episode, we are back in the Skyblock world, probably going to be working on getting hold of a bunch of lava buckets because the dragon in Skyblock drops lava, at least in this Skyblock map, it's been tweaked so that lava is added to the loot tables. And as I mentioned in previous episodes, I really want to put together a nether fortress mob farm that just uses lava as an easy way to collect all the mobs at the bottom for easy dispatching. And so today, we're actually headed over to the nether fortress itself to get the last ingredient for resummoning the dragon, and that is blaze powder. Having acquired a pretty decent amount of ender pearls from our warped forest enderman farm in the last episode, the plan now is just to get the ingredients we need to turn those into eyes of ender. Of course, we will need to do that so we can get hold of the end crystals we need to resummon the dragon as well as maybe get stuff like ender chests on the go and the idea now is that we're going to be converting this fortress in stages into a pretty decent spawning platform for everything now that we have some elytra i really don't feel too bad about starting to take down this fortress and working on the outside of the fortress a little bit here because goodness only knows Falling into the void before this would have been a bit of a disaster, but now we've got Elytra saving ourselves from that seems like a more realistic prospect. And this is actually going to form the foundation for our nether fortress farm, because what we're going to do is have a series of platforms that leads out about eight or nine blocks into the void over here. And we're going to use this as a blaze spawning platform, also kind of as a proof of concept, because the nether fortress hitbox has been modified slightly in this map. So it's not quite like the usual nether fortress hitbox where there's a larger hitbox surrounding a large structure and a series of smaller hitboxes in the region of that of the uh, the elements of the fortress, like the corridors and platforms and that kind of stuff. In this case, what we're dealing with is the kind of hitbox that only goes around the fortress structure itself, not around like the broader structure, but the individual elements of it. And so for a start, as we found in my previous Skyblock playthrough, you will need to use solid blocks of nether bricks in order to spawn fortress mobs. You can't use any other kind of block. You can't even use double slabs of nether bricks to make a full block. You actually have to use regular nether brick blocks. So no cobblestone, no slabs of other material, and no slabs of nether brick. It has to be full solid blocks. The plus side to that is that now, over there in the distance, you can't quite see it because of the void fog, but if I come back down over here, you will see that the piglins in this farm will have traded us some nether bricks in the past. They actually trade individual nether bricks, but it's much easier to collect those and have a renewable supply of nether bricks blocks by comparison. All you need to do is just craft those up into nether brick, which was a lot harder to do when we didn't have a netherrack crafting recipe or an individual way of getting nether bricks in the previous version of the map. And now when I fly back over here, if I get rid of the mob cap from that pigman farm, you'll see that we end up with a couple of fortress mobs spawning on here already, which is actually kind of perfect. The only problem now is that I have to lure them down into here so that I can attack them for blaze powder. And if they drop blaze rods, it is a perilous thing making sure that we can reach out and get them. But there we go, we already have eight blaze powder, which is enough for eight eyes of ender, making it possible to get us eight end crystal. So that's two respawns of the dragon right there. Now naturally I don't really want ghasts to spawn on this platform so I am going to use the materials that I have on me right now and probably a few slabs and bits and pieces as well to slab over the top of this platform and make sure that we don't get anything spawning out here in the void. We've got our ghast farm over there of course but it's not going to be loaded so that won't be taking up the mob cap and what I'm probably going to do is fly away and come back and hopefully just get stuff like blazes and zombie pigmen spawning in here which we can easily dispatch for their drops. The occasional with a skeleton might spawn on the interior of the structure here, but that will be easily dealt with if we have a little shelter above here that we can step under and deal with the skeletons because they're three blocks high. And from that, we should hopefully be able to gather enough material to fight the dragon a whole bunch of times, and maybe even if we get lucky with the Wither Skeleton Skulls, fight the Wither as a bonus, because the Wither has a couple of interesting aspects to it in Skyblock as well. Naturally, all this is going to be possible if you don't have Elytra yet in your Skyblock playthrough. You can walk out onto a platform 23 blocks away from this area and 
allow stuff to spawn, then come back and either fight it manually, or if you want a slightly more automated setup for it, I have used flying machines using slime blocks to set up a nether fortress mob farm in the past, but I felt like now it was a little bit easier to do because of lava moving mobs around that are resistant to fire, I figured why not give it a go this way. And it looks like we have a couple of contenders in here already. There's a blaze over here on this side of the platform, which I'll try and take out, although I am currently on fire. We could, of course, oh, yeah, there we go, and the skeletons have angered the zombie pigmen as well. Let's get a couple more hits in on these. Take those out nice and quickly, and oh dear. It is, of course, probably a good plan at this stage to get ourselves some fire resistance potions, because, of course, we've been farming magma cubes for a little while, and we should have plenty of magma cream where we can do that. But you know what? Sometimes I just feel like living dangerously. <laughs> and maybe it's the overconfidence that comes with having a set of elytra now, but I'm pretty confident that we can take on these blazes and get ourselves a few blaze rods. We've got the shield that we can block the fireballs with, of course, and if we get set on fire a little bit, that's really no big deal. What we end up with is a whole bunch of blaze rods, and I do have looting three on this sword and sharpness five, which is how the blazes are going down so easily, and how we already have 28 blaze powder. Not bad at all. I think what we're going to do is repeat this method a few times until we get hold of about a stack of blaze powder, and then I think we're going to be able to spawn the dragon as much as we want in this episode. All right, that is 10 more blaze powder, taking us to 64 and two left over. Not bad, I had to kill a couple of zombie pigmen to do it. No wither skeletons spawned in here at all during those few brief spawn cycles, but that's absolutely fine. We don't need those yet. We'll come back for them later and we should be able to build a pretty effective wither skull farm once all of this is done. Now let's head back over in this direction. We need to pick up the ender pearls and probably trade a little bit of glass from my librarians, but then we should be able to craft as many end crystals as our hearts desire. And so back at the tool shed, all we need is a handful of gas tears from in here. We've already got the blaze powder and I've traded a little bit of glass, which is not much to get us started, but the villagers are only going to trade it in small batches, so I figured we might as well get started in the meantime. And with all of those eyes of ender crafted up, we're going to need an eye of ender, a gas tear, and seven glass to get ourselves one end crystal so right now we can do that 13 times which means at least three dragon fights to get us started and then of course all we'll need is a little bit more glass since we've already got enough gas tears and eyes of ender to last us a little while for emeralds i've mostly been trading iron from the iron farm to the toolsmith and a little bit of gold from the zombie pigman farm to the cleric as well because that gives us 24 emeralds with which we can probably buy out all of the glass that these guys are going to trade us for the next little while have you got glass as well i think there are two glass traders in here maybe this guy is the other one behind here yes there we go okay so we got ourselves about a stack and a half of glass from both of them i think they trade 48 each which probably means now we can make another 13 or so end crystals giving us a total of 26 oh yeah there we go 27 we had a little bit extra left over and of course we could smelt some of the sand from the husk farm to get the glass as well but i'm saving all of that sand for concrete at this stage but yeah there we go that is a decent amount of dragon fights in the bag right there and to be honest we could probably wait another couple of day night cycles and just get the rest of the end crystals crafted up already but i'm a little bit impatient to fight the dragon and we're probably going to have to come back to the overworld every so often anyway to pick up lava buckets as they fall through the portal because when the dragon drops the bucket over the portal it just ends up falling through and spawning at our spawn point here in the overworld so i will need to make sure those get picked up i'm not certain in a single player world if the spawn chunks are going to stay loaded while you're in another dimension but even if they aren't i want to make sure that i come back and pick up those lava buckets just in case and so i'm going to stash the majority of the materials in here i'm only going to take four of the end crystals with me this time around because we will be back to the overworld pretty much straight away and in this case because i've got elytra now i don't really need to worry too much about the dragon fight it's actually going to be fairly trivial i'll just take my bow with infinity and a handful of arrows will bring the end crystals a decent amount of fireworks and hopefully we should be able to take out the ender dragon no problem so having hopped on through here to the end all we'll need to do is place the crystals around the end portal here and that will re-summon the dragon oh i did not know the fires there could burn you i thought they were just aesthetic but of course why wouldn't they be they're fires all right Let's bring the dragon back for round two, and I think round two is going to go a lot smoother than round one did. And it's actually weird kind of seeing how the obsidian pillars are rebuilt every single time, but it happens that way, and whoa. 
Yeah, there we go. We got the end again. The fight is on, and it's kind of weird in the respawn sequence seeing how the obsidian pillars are kind of rebuilt as the dragon is respawning. It's kind of cool to see it refresh that area at the top of the towers. But, oh, lag spikes aside, I think we are taking down the dragon much easier this time as long as we can stay in the air, take out the end crystals one by one, and get a couple of easy shots on those ones in the caged pillars. Once I have a light try, I actually prefer shooting downwards into these cages instead of shooting up from the corners, although that's still an option if I wanted to come into land. I just prefer staying maneuverable and staying in the air in the meantime, and we should get a nice easy shot on that one. Actually, let's come down and see if we can get that one through the corner here. Yep, got it. Got it while the dragon was healing from it. Excellent stuff. So now, <laughs> Enderman notwithstanding, we should have a nice, easy fight of the dragon. And I think what we're going to do throughout this is come back and fight the dragon in a couple of different ways. Whoa, careful. Have to remember I'm not wearing my full protection armor like I am in the survival guide world. But we should be able to chase down the dragon, get a few shots in, and once it perches on the central nest, the bedrock portal, we should be able to go in and get a few swings in with our Sharpness 5 sword, and that will make the fight go a whole lot quicker. Yeah, we just got to attack the ankles, and it whoa, there we go. And when we get knocked up into the air, it's nice and easy because we can just activate the elytra and get on back into the fight. Now, this time, I think the dragon is probably going to get away from me before I'm able to do a couple more hits. Yep, there we go. Okay, we got hit by the wings there. Let's see if we can get a couple more hits in on the ankles before the dragon starts to fly away. Actually, it looks like it's staying down here for a really long period of time. And so the dragon returns to the sky with about half health left and we should be able to take it down nice and easily from here. All right, it is coming down to perch again. It's doing one more perch and we should be able to take it out if we deal enough damage this time, which it looks like we can because all I need to do is stand behind the ankles here and deal a couple more hits with the sword. And the dragon is done for the second time. That's our second bucket of lava. Let me quickly grab that before it falls into the portal. And we could probably stay in the end if we grab the uh, bucket of lava quickly enough. But after that, the portal activates. And if the lava bucket is still in there, it'll just be transported straight back to the central Skyblock Island. And I get a little bit of XP for my trouble. How lovely. So that was a nice easy dragon fight and the first of many because with buckets of lava in hand we'll be able to do a whole lot more in the nether. Now I want to do a little bit of experimentation to see if during some of these dragon fights I can use some of the methods people have been using in the recent boom in popularity that you've seen from Minecraft speedruns where a lot of the time they will just use explosive beds to take down the dragon and I've been looking into the methods required to do that. Now, naturally, to get the amount of beds, we're going to need to take down the dragon, which does not have an insignificant amount of health. We're going to need a fair amount of wool. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here shearing up the sheep, making sure I have enough wool to craft a few beds. We're not going to be taking this down in the most efficient way because I don't have a great deal of practice at this method. But having seen it in practice a couple of times now, I'm fairly confident that I can pull something like this off. And let's face it, the stakes aren't quite as high for me as they are for speedrunners, right? So we're going to make 10 beds in total for this. A lot of the time... Experienced speedrunners only seem to need seven because I think that's just the optimal number you can use to take down the dragon's entire health bar. And we could always swing at it with a sword if we need to finish it off. Got a few eggs up here. Oh, there's a, <laughs> a new chicken on the island. But yeah, the next plan is to go through to the end again with a few more end crystals in hand and see if we can attempt this bed method. And you can really begin to set up this method once all of the end crystals have respawned and the dragon is back in the air. It's probably best to get this set up now before... The dragon does too much swooping around and we'll probably, just for ease of purposes here, take out the end crystals as well. But the idea to start off with is avoid <laughs> avoid the dragon's attacks and place a block of obsidian one block above the bedrock here in the end portal. And you can do whatever you want with the rest of the materials, but as long as there is one piece of obsidian there, you should be able to place beds on that. And then when the dragon swoops down to perch on the central portal, as it often does, especially once the end crystals have been taken out, that is when you can start placing beds from your inventory. And since beds are known to explode when used in the end or the nether, that means that we do a great deal of explosive damage to the dragon. Although there is a little bit more nuance, a little bit more finesse to it than I'm making it sound, because the dragon actually has a fairly unique hitbox among other mobs, and hopefully, once the dragon starts to perch on the portal, we'll be able to demonstrate that. Okay, with all of the end crystals now taken out, the dragon should soon start to come and perch on the portal, and you'll see 
its behavior change as it flies. It's going to fire a few more fireballs at us, but then you'll notice it very definitely do a sharp turn towards the portal, and that's when it starts to come down and perch. And that should be happening any second now. It seems to be circling more around the center of the arena, so can be pretty confident that it's coming in towards the portal. Yep, there we go. Okay, we saw it there. The dragon did a really sharp turn, and this is where we start exploding the beds, and we probably set ourselves on fire a few times, but we're going to try our best, there we go, to get the dragon's hitbox a couple of times. Now, I am on fire a little bit. I'm going to step off a little bit, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about this method and why it works so well. So if I press F3 and B, we can take a look at the dragon's hitbox, which as you can see, is pretty large. And that <laughs> that larger box is something that we need to ignore. What we're looking at really is the hit zones on the dragon, the stuff that you need to be attacking and the places the dragon can attack you. And when the dragon is circling in the air, it kind of looks like a drone when all of these boxes are moving around. But the cool part about this is that the dragon's hitbox is kind of intersect and overlap as it turns. And what that means is that we can deal damage to multiple of these hitboxes at once, which seems to be the way speedrunners do it from what I understand. There we go. As you can see, as the dragon starts moving, you'll notice some of the hitboxes start to overlap a little bit. And as it turns, that is kind of the optimal moment where an explosion can deal a lot of damage to all of those hitboxes at once, or near enough that the zones on the dragon's hitbox where the player will be able to deal any damage. So as I take out some of the fires from around the portal here, we're going to place another bed, we're going to wait for the dragon to come back overhead, and we're going to try our best to explode the bed as some of those hitboxes are kind of overlapping in the air while the dragon turns. There it goes, it's actually turning pretty wildly, and as it it does a turn towards the bottom of its arc here like there that's when we want to explode it it's actually a little bit more difficult than it at first appears but obviously right now i'm taking very little damage from any of these exploding beds thanks to the fact that the bedrock is shielding me from any damage but that is it for the beds and we've just taken out a pretty significant portion of the dragon's health now if you do that optimally it can deal a lot more damage because you're hitting all of the dragon's hitboxes at once but that kind of requires some very precise timing which i'm still not particularly skilled at and not having really looked into how to speedrun minecraft all that much I'm not really all that good at it, but I just wanted to show you that as a method because I've done a couple of these dragon fights in the past where I've attempted to use beds and explosives to fight the dragon, but never with the understanding of it that I have now. So hopefully we should just be able to wrap up the rest of this dragon fight, and then I think I might try the bed method a little bit more often when I fight the dragon in future. But one hit on target, and that should be dragon fight number two all done and dusted. Fantastic stuff as the dragon sweeps in towards the portal one final time. There we go, we should be able to collect another bucket of lava, which will probably end up falling in the portal at this point. Yep, there we go, all of the XP on the ground, the portal is lit, and I don't know if the dragon actually drops the bucket of lava closer to where it is killed, or if it just, yeah, no, there it is, okay, it's over there on the ground. So we need to be a little bit more aware of exactly where we kill the dragon to make sure we pick up the lava bucket every time. It's not always going to drop it as it dies in its final animation over the portal. But the, hey, that is bucket of lava number three. And also, I should point this out, end gateway number three. So what we're going to be able to do here is establish a few more gateways out to the outer end islands and hopefully if we want to explore a little further and get some more shulker boxes in the future, we can do that too. Hey, bucket of lava number three in there next to the dragon egg. Fantastic. Right, well, I'm going to do a little bit more trading with my villagers to try and get a bit more glass since it is a new day. And I think you guys know the drill by now. So we're going to do a bunch more dragon fights and we're probably going to do those in the form of a montage.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little montage of the dragon fight. I couldn't resist putting a bunch of clips in there, and while that wasn't every single fight I did, I have now killed the ender dragon, let me see in here, a total of 18 times. So we now actually have 18 buckets of lava waiting in this chest here, and I couldn't resist showing you some of the highs and lows of that little... Uh, series of fights with the dragon, specifically the two deaths <laughs> that you may have seen in there, the two rather explosive deaths. Uh, one of them I just ended up flying slightly too close to an end crystal as I was shooting an arrow at it, which meant I got blown up along with basically everything else in that area. Thankfully all my items and stuff were fine. The second one did not work out quite so easily because I ended up blowing up a bed and I was in a weird position where I think I was maybe mid jump or I just wasn't close enough to any blocks that were going to shield me from the explosion and I ended up blowing up at that range as well. It was quite impressive how easily that happened. Well, of course, my armor wasn't particularly protective. It still, yeah, it still felt like it shouldn't have killed me. So that one is a little bit weird. But anyway, uh, I, I did die one more time off camera to an enderman, but that wasn't really a great deal of uh, a problem and I was able to recover all of my stuff. I did lose a little bit of gear to the fire, but thankfully, of course, I have some wonderful villagers who are able to trade me more stuff and I had some backup gear from raiding the end as well. So while the gear here is looking a little bit different, I lost silk touch on my pickaxe. I have a book for that in here. I have a book somewhere around. There we go. So yeah, nice and easy to recover all of the gear that we lost. Of course, this is Skyblock. You can basically recover more or less anything. So the deaths were more funny and more something I wanted to include in the montage. And of course, the main thing is that we now have all 18 of these lava buckets. I actually want to get a few more than this. I'm planning on getting 24 or maybe even 32 lava buckets for the farm design I have in mind because we want to surround each side of the nether fortress tower with a lava platform that's just going to sweep all of the mobs towards the center and the fact that we have a bunch of lava buckets in the nether just means we can do that nice and easily so if you want to farm lava on this skyblock map if you're interested in making a more interesting cobblestone generator or if you're planning on doing some more stuff in the nether like i am then that is the way to do it you've got to farm the dragon and of course lava doesn't have the same mechanics as water it doesn't form an infinite source if you place it in a two by two or anything so each of these buckets of lava is going to be crucial to what we're doing in the nether but we're going to save that for a future episode because i've had enough fun for one day and i need to make sure that all of my gear is intact and maybe do a little bit of improving of some of this other stuff before we get back into the action so i'm going to leave it there thank you so much for watching this episode of skyblock 116 i hope you enjoyed it my name has been pixel Rifts. don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now